Hey guys, Level Cap here. Welcome back to another episode of This Week in Gaming, the series where we cover the last week's worth of gaming news. And jumping right into things here, we recently heard that there's going to be a Titanfall 2, but now we know that Titanfall 2's release window has been leaked by toy maker McFarland Toys. Their upcoming line of Titanfall figures is set to launch this winter to coincide with the highly anticipated launch of Titanfall 2. While EA has yet to confirm a specific release date, lead writer for the game, Jesse Jesse Stern told Forbes, sometime late this year or early next seems like the right neighborhood for completion. In regards to the single player campaign for Titanfall 2, Stern said that the original game, we knew all the answers, we just could never deliver it. Though he didn't touch on any specifics in terms of length or design, it seems like Respawn is aware of how disappointed some people were with the single player mode in Titanfall. Additionally, Lionsgate is working with Respawn to bring a Titanfall TV series to life. Hopefully this is a sign that a real effort is being made to expand the present and interesting but never really explored story of Titanfall's world. Another game that had an unimpressive single player experience, Watch Dogs, is also getting a follow up within the next year or so. The fact that Ubisoft is taking a break from the Assassin's Creed franchise in 2016 might mean that Watch Dogs 2 is getting the proper treatment that many people felt the original never got, despite its delays. In Star Citizen news, the Star Citizen single player mode Squadron 42 is being split from the massively multiplayer online portion of the game. Original backers of the game's Kickstarter and people who buy the game prior to February 14th will still get both titles together, but after the 14th they'll be sold separately for $45 each. Owning one will get you the other one for $15 though, so it's not as much of an investment as some people are making it out to be. Additionally, both games will utilize the same launcher and infrastructure. While the split does fly in the face of their original Kickstarter plan for Star Citizen to be everything you dreamed you could have in a space sim all in one glorious, ever-evolving pack Package, it's still not as jarring a split as H1Z1's. Originally positioned to become a single free-to-play title after its early access program ran its course, H1Z1 survival and competitive game modes are now being split into two separate games sold for $19.99 each. Whether or not they'll eventually be free to play is unclear, but people who pay for H1Z1 before the 16th will get both titles. Considering H1Z1 isn't being split along a multiplayer versus single player line, it's kind of odd that they would do something like this. Daybreak Games have justified the split citing that players almost exclusively play one game mode or the other. To the developers, this might justify splitting the game, but H1Z1 being largely unfinished and unpolished could be playing a much bigger role in how people are choosing to play it. In virtual reality news, how people will play VR games is starting to get a little clearer as devs behind both the upcoming HTC Vive and Oculus Rift have confirmed that the GTX 970 will run most VR titles. Nvidia's GTX 970 being a mid-level graphics card is good news for people interested in virtual reality as it sets the barrier for entry to VR gaming at a more reasonable level even though the headsets themselves cost $600. And speaking of reduced barriers, apparently the one for entering the game development world has gotten a bit lower this week as Amazon has announced their own free-to-use CryEngine-based game engine called Lumberyard. Unlike its competitors, Lumberyard has no license or royalty fees associated with using it. Unless, of course, you want to take advantage of Amazon's web services for multiplayer, and I'm not exactly sure what that means, if you're playing for server rental or what. Interestingly, the engine features some Twitch integration that gives viewers the ability to affect gameplay of Lumberyard games via chat should a developer choose to implement that feature. Why anyone would want Twitch chat to affect your actual in-game experience is beyond me, but who knows, maybe somebody will think of something creative. With game engine costs having plummeted in recent years, it should come as no surprise that there's now a free option available, and a good free option apparently. With the barrier for entry to proper game development now so low, Low, what kind of pressure does that put on established game studios? Someone making a game from their bedroom obviously won't be creating a massive title like Battlefield or Bioshock, but titles like Undertale and The Binding of Isaac are proof that games don't have to be big to be a massive success. 
And on a completely different note, game piracy. It's one of those things that many publishers complain puts a massive dent in their sales, but it's about to get a thorough examination as piracy group 3DM have announced they won't be cracking any single player games for the next year, claiming that the Denuvo copy protection found in Just Cause 3 was just too tough to crack. 3DM have basically made it clear that DRM is getting much tougher to work around. Much has been said about how piracy really hurts the gaming industry, and this will be the first time that we can actually measure it in any sort of meaningful way. And although a lot of people do pirate games to get around crazy regional taxes that will inflate the cost of the game to $100 or government censorship, maybe this will just put a bit more pressure on those societies to try and change their regional taxes or lift some of the government censorships rather than just continuing to pirate things. And in Battlefield news, wait, what's that? Is there actual Battlefield news? Kind of. Fans of Battlefield 4 may be getting some new content for the title, as indicated via Dice LA developer David Serlin's tweets. Responding to a question about Battlefield 4's continued support, Serlin said, I'm awaiting to go ahead on communication to tell you guys dot dot dot. Whether this is more maps or guns is unclear, but it doesn't seem to cover anything not already officially announced. Credit to fellow YouTuber Westy for finding this tweet. Xbox One owners are getting some new content to test out this weekend as Homefront, the Revolution's closed beta is now live. The closed beta ends on the 14th at 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so signups are available via the game's website if you want to try that out. In other beta news, The Division is getting an open beta that starts on February 18th with a patch notes list that covers everything from PvP mechanics to exploit fixes. It seems like these betas are actually having a real impact on the final product and aren't just demos. And speaking of patches, the Rainbow Six Siege 2.1 update is now live and includes a massive list of changes, tweaks, and fixes in addition to new custom games on dedicated servers. I'll be doing a video covering the patch, so stay tuned for that as it introduces a lot of changes. Anyway, that wraps it up for this week in gaming. Let me know how you guys are liking this new news segment show. Do you want to see more of it? Do you want me to stop doing it? Let me know if you have any constructive criticism in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.